So yes, the real Android 16 update is here. Not that crummy small update you're expecting, which is, well, it's technically not even out yet. Anyway, this is the test phase for that massive expressive overhaul that we've been waiting for. And we've basically been playing with it over the last couple of hours. So yeah, let's not waste any more time and just get right into the video. I am gonna waste your time just briefly though, by asking you to subscribe to the channel. If you're not, well, I mean, you should be, you're a legend if you will. If you don't, yeah, well, go about your day, it's fine. It's gonna be a nice time regardless, but yeah, cheers, let's get into this. I'm gonna get the biggest changes right out of the way here. So bear in mind, this basically dropped during IO, so we might not be as meticulous as we probably would be usually, but I do think this is one hell of a highlight reel, especially for anyone interested in Android. But yeah, some interesting stuff. I'm not gonna waste any more time, I wasted too much already. The most substantial change that you'll probably see is to the quick settings panel. Most notably, there are lots of new animations here with added bounce and elasticity. There's also a little bit of extra background blur on this panel itself, but that does extend beyond that anyway. The layout is now better at what I'd describe as snapping similar sections together or similar notifications for applications, all that kind of stuff. And when you dismiss a notification, it has a really lovely little bounce and it'll unstick from your thumb before disappearing into the ether you probably spot the new bottom panel buttons as well. These are much, much larger than they are in Android 15 with the notification history on the left and a massive clear all button plus a notification settings button there if you wanna make changes here. So the biggest change is the brand new toggle section. The pills that we've known to come and love since Android 12, they stick around. So you have four of those to begin with in this layout, but they are changed to smaller buttons beneath this, which means you can have 10 when the quick settings panel is fully extended. You can resize these up or down to suit whatever layout you do want or do prefer. And the toggles for the very first time are categorized so you can select them based upon the categorization that Google's decided upon. When you have something active, the toggle itself is colored to dynamic color settings based upon the actual system itself. But it's also changed to a boxy shape to quickly notify you that it's active. When inactive, it's back to a glassy, almost oblong shape. There's a couple of cool things here though. When you one tap the modes and Bluetooth tiles, they'll just enable and disable, but the Wi-Fi toggle still brings up that pop-up menu for you to select more options. I do wish this was disabled, but it kind of is what it is at this stage. The animations across this entire section, they're super slick here, and no matter what you're doing, I think they look gorgeous. There's a mini sideways bounce that I absolutely adore, and I wanna see this across lots of other areas of the section, and we'll get into that in just a moment. You'll also spot that the brightness slider has a whopping great draggable line instead of that almost abstract option we have here in Android 15. This new iconography or tool is present on the volume controls as well that appear when you tap the volume rocker. There's a tiny little dot at the top of this to indicate the top volume level or the top maximum level you can go to. That's basically, you can just tap this to go there instantly. But if you click the volume pane or the volume panel, it, it is a brand new section here, more or less. The new tab sliders are present across all of these, plus some other little button, button changes if you do want them. So I will say with this redesign, I'm not actually sure how I feel about the status bar redesign, which has new Wi-Fi and signal status icons. They're broken up and detached to, I would say, better show connection strength, kind of like how it works on One UI, MIUI, and even Oxygen OS. The signal and Wi-Fi icons are swapped around here as well, or at least I think they are. C correct me if I'm wrong here. It, I think it does it affect your muscle memory when you're checking these, but again, kind of is what it is and it's part of Google's major redesign, of course. So yeah, they think it works, it's up to them. Now for the battery icon, which is, well, it's very, very different than it has been in the past. If you have the battery level active, it's now actually inside the icon. So the icon itself is much, much larger. The battery icon is actually sideways as well, which again, I can't say I'm all too convinced by, but I did really like the old version to be completely honest with you. Also, when your battery gets low, it should turn red. When it's charging, it will also turn a vivid green. I think these changes definitely feel small on the surface, but we've not seen a change to this area for your phone for like five or six years now, maybe longer. So yeah, it does feel shocking because we're just not used to seeing changes in this area. And in terms of customization, finally, we're getting the ability to change, it, make changes to the Pixel Launcher anyway, as it's getting some options for custom icon shapes. The bad news, it's not actually live in this particular build. Themed icons is the only toggle within this section, but the wallpaper and style app sort of alludes to this or almost leaks it by just showing the circle and default before you tap this. But yeah, nothing live here yet, if you were hoping for that. So we're probably gonna see this in the next beta update. So yeah, stick around if you do wanna see more in terms of the theming options with the default Pixel Launcher. The thing is the entire wallpaper and style application has had a major overhaul. It's full of what I consider lovely animations with the shortcut section being better organized. The whole thing is improved in I'd say the right ways, but it can be a little bit buggy. At least it doesn't always work perfectly because this is a beta after all. One tiny thing 
literally that you might notice is that the at a glance widget has shrunk here ever so slightly. It isn't removable. I know a lot of you out there really want to see a removable uh, at a glance widget, but any changes I think are welcome to get more content on your screen, including more integrated widgets within that panel when it is active on your phone. Here's a big one though. You can now finally add effects to your wallpaper, like simple stuff. For instance, a shaped cutout or even fake weather effects like snow, fog, rain, sun, and even mimic the local weather to your location. The subjects on the wallpaper should react to the conditions like snow buildup on uh, maybe like my pet dog here, for instance, or shimmer from the sunshine when it's shining outside. It's, I do think it's sort of cringeworthy, probably in the best way in terms of like software builds, but in at least in terms of giving you options, you can just choose a photo, tap the effects, get started and add that customization that probably has been missing from Pixel Launcher. Also, the new system font is, you probably noticed from this video, a lot more bubbly. I'm not exactly sure of the font that's used here, but it is 100% giving me Comic Sans vibes for better or worse in a lot of ways. You tell me what you think. I think it's a bit cheap if I'm being completely honest with you, but yeah, it is what it is. If you're like me and you use a recent app almost too much, well, you'll notice there's some changes to the layout here, including little tap drop down header toggles and name labels, which allow you to quickly do app ac actions like enter split screen, pause the application, take a screenshot of the app itself, and all of that jazz, including the option for freeform windows on Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which, correct me if I'm wrong, actually appears to be live by default here. I'm actually not 100% sure. Let me know down in the comment sections below if you're a Pixel Fold user. Also, if you are using a Fold, the dock has a really gorgeous new animation that swooshes in when you open this section. The screenshot on select tools, you'll notice these have proper buttons as well with oblong holsters. There's, well, it, it looks a lot better than floating text. Let me say, let me put it that way. Let's get into the app drawer real quick because there are a few things that have changed here as well. Firstly, this is not technically full screen any, anymore as it's a floating sheet, but the Google search widget at the top, you might notice is themed by default because before you needed themed icons to be active before this would show. That's no longer the case. I do think that's a really good option, which is again, good for Google's theming prowess that they seem to have pushed out over the last few years. As for settings, there is a huge overhaul for this menu. I'm talking practically new everything to here, new toggles, new font, new colors, new layouts. And without going into it too deep, because there are lots of changes here, you'll see little isolated layouts and better stuff across the board. There's better animations here as well, which again is core to Material 3 Expressive. In connection preferences, you might also notice that audio sharing is back if you can get it working. Maybe it'll finally launch with Android 16 QPR 1 whenever it's ready. But yeah, it has shown up a few times over the past couple of years on plenty of betas. Probably too many to list out here in this video. As for the lock screen, this has a few changes. Firstly, when you log in, there's a brand new pin entry screen with new buttons and bolder numbers or characters if you're using characters. You still get the material UI icon animation to obscure the passcode, but yeah, bigger options, looks a lot better to me, at least at first glance. There's also some customization options coming over from the wallpaper and style app that do affect lock screen with the default two line clock being almost, I would say customizable, it's not fully customizable, with the ability to adjust the thickness of the font with a slider within this application. The changes are really wild here too. It's like drastic alterations based upon where you put that slider or where you've pushed it to. I like it to be honest, because I think things like being a bit extra on Android is kind of nice, but nothing else really major from other lock screen clocks, at least just yet. Just the first one, the default one, that is comes pre-installed or is preset on your phone. Lock screen notification controls, they're also leveling up here with the ability to decide between a full list, a compact view, and customization options here like disabling silent notifications of showing or removing any of the notifications you've already seen. It's just cleaning up an area that I think that can get really busy or congested. And again, extra controls is always nice in Android. We're not gonna get into every single detail here because I do think there is simply not enough time to delve into all of the intricacies or minutia of Android 16 QPR1, especially as this is probably the biggest update over the past four years combined. So don't take my word for it. Go get it if you wanna try out something new, especially if you're a Pixel owner. All that's left for me to say is cheers for watching. And hopefully this has given you an insight into, yeah, the biggest Android update for a long, long time. But yeah, I'll speak to you later.